Hello, I'm Evan Brand, Certified Functional Medicine Practitioner, joining you today to talk about candida and what leads to it. You know, I've seen over a thousand cases in my functional medicine clinic, hundreds and hundreds of cases of candida overgrowth, and many people have been to one, two, three, five, fifteen, twenty practitioners before they get to me, and they've already been treated for candida. But for some reason, when we run their organic acids testing, or when we run their comprehensive stool testing, guess what? They still show up with a candida overgrowth. And that's because people are missing the boat. You may go to your conventional doctor or your naturopath or your functional medicine doc. And they may come in and create some type of candida treatment protocol. The problem is they didn't address the root causes of why the candida happened in the first place. So any practitioner can come in and use oregano oil and berberine and caprylic acid and coconut extract and MCT oil and olive leaf and Paul de Arco bark. I mean, I could go on and on listing you all the antifungal herbs that we can use, but that's not getting to the root cause. So let's dive into those today because I think this is the missing piece you've been looking for. So first things first, I mean, what leads to this? I didn't even put the top causes. It's top 10. I was like, okay, I'm not writing the number until I'm done coming up with a list. Number one, antibiotics. I mean, this is a no-brainer, right? You go to the conventional medical doctor's office for a sinus infection or your children, which I see lots of children these days with candida problems, they go in for strep throat, guess what? They get put on antibiotics and most practitioners are not using the things that we use if antibiotics are necessary, which is Saccharomyces boulardii and a high dose probiotic to try to help negate or mitigate the risk or the damage to the gut, which allows candida to flourish. So it's a very common situation Many people even go in just for a regular dental procedure, possibly a root canal or something like that. They ended up get putting on antibiotics and then candida takes over and thrives. Remember, candida is an opportunistic yeast. What is it? That's what it is. It's an opportunistic yeast. Listen to that first word, opportunistic, meaning it's going to stay in a relative balance with the rest of the fungi and microbes in your gut, except for when it's allowed to become opportunistic with some of these root causes. So number two, antifungals, right? Here's the funny thing. Many people don't realize this, but there's actually a paper that's come out that shows that when you use the conventional antifungal medications like Nystatin or Diflucan, Fluconazole, that actually causes the candida to go into its asexual reproduction stage or phase, meaning it's like, oh my God, I'm about to get killed by this antifungal drug. Let's go ahead and replicate. So guess what? That creates antifungal resistant problems and the Center for Disease Controls made a huge warning about this and they've already said hey we're in the post antibiotic era meaning antibiotics don't work the way they used to and the way they should now we're approaching the antifungal resistant issue where these fungal drugs just don't work anymore so you could go and get treated for a UTI with these or these and the candida comes back Number three, H. pylori. This is a common bacterial infection. I've done a video specifically on H. pylori, which I'll link right here. But H. pylori is a huge problem. I had H. pylori. That was probably part of my candida problem. But I also had antibiotics, right? So, I mean, it's hard to find chicken or the egg. It doesn't matter. You just have to try to peel back all the layers. But H. pylori, what it does is it damages the parietal cells. And these are the stomach acid producing cells in the gut which leads us into number four, low HCL, hydrochloric acid production is necessary to help mitigate candida and bacterial overgrowth and parasites. Because think of stomach acid as a neutralizer, meaning you go and you eat some bad sushi, okay? If you have enough HCL, hopefully you would kill off those pathogens and you don't get sick, but your friend who has low stomach acid, they get sick and you don't, right? So stress, age, look at Dr. Jonathan Wright's book, why stomach acid is good for you. He found that just age, by the time you're age 40, you're making half of the HCL that you made when you were 20. And remember, HCL is what kills and neutralizes pathogens, including candida. This is why a turkey vulture, a very impressive animal, they have the most acidic stomach of any creature on planet Earth. This is how they can eat roadkill that's been rotting and putrefying on the side of the road for a week they'll eat that and they don't get sick. It's because they have incredibly high levels of HCL. They have so much stomach acid, they can kill any bacteria or pathogen that they consume. Uh, PPIs, of course, proton pump inhibiting drugs, Nexium, Prilosec, over-the-counter proton pump inhibitors, acid blockers like Tums. I saw some ridiculous advertisement the other day promoting Tums. <laughs> Oh my God.
When your favorite food starts a fight, fight back fast with Tums. It's like, really? Y'all are still in business? It's just not a good strategy. Will it fix heartburn in the immediate situation? Yes, but most of the time, the reason you had heartburn was low stomach acid in the first place. And that low stomach acid perpetual cycle is gonna lead to a lot of these other problems and then eventually candida. SIBO, this is easy, right? When you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, candida just joins the party. I see this all the time. I rarely see candida by itself. It's often candida plus bacteria plus parasites plus H. pylori. This is a big one here, okay? I'm gonna put a star next to it. Mold exposure and mycotoxins. This was my story, you know, getting exposed to mold toxin. Mold toxin is something you breathe in, your moldy office, your moldy school, your moldy house, wherever you've been exposed to a moldy building, which may or may not have had a water leak. It could have just been high humidity that allowed the paper backing on your drywall to rot or your carpets to accumulate mold toxin or your heating and cooling vents in your car. Mercedes did a huge recall. 2.5 million cars are being recalled due to mold contamination of the HVAC system. So if you get to work after driving your nice Mercedes and you got a headache, it's probably due to mold. But mold exposure, guess what it does? It's an immune suppressant. It's an immunosuppressant. So specifically, there's one called MPA for short, mycophenolic acid. Mycophenolic acid is what they actually give people to kill their immune system. So if they're getting an organ transplant, their body won't reject the new organ. So that tells you how powerful mycophenolic acid is at suppressing the immune system. It's bad stuff. And when your immune system is suppressed, remember, candida is opportunistic, it's going to thrive. Let's keep going here. Uh, Lyme and co-infections, I mean, this is a no-brainer, right? Think of Lyme and co-infections. Let me scoot over here. Lyme and co-infections, Borrelia, Bartonella, Babesia, Auricula, you got Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. They're, I could go on and on, but these different infections weaken the immune system. So once again, chicken or egg, it doesn't matter, but I often find people with candida problems probably have Lyme or co-infections as well. Maybe 50% of the cases I see. Now I'm biased because people are, don't feel well when they consult with me. This is not your average person. So maybe you're lucky and you don't have that, but I just find it commonly. Moving on here, EBV, Epstein-Barr, and other viruses. So you've got mycoplasma, which can be related. I see a lot of Epstein-Barr, mycoplasma, cytomegalovirus. A lot of these bacterium and viruses, like I said, they hang out together. Um, next, parasites. I've done videos on that, so I'll put you one up here on parasites. Big problem for me. I had parasites. I lost 25 pounds without trying. None of the conventional doctors could help me. I had to fix myself. No fun. And I also had candida. So you see how uh, personal experience can help to uh, create good clinical experience and background. Uh, next, I mean, malabsorption, right? That's really what we're talking about as a whole here. We're talking about malabsorption in the gut. We're talking bacteria, parasites. We're talking opportunistic yeast. We're talking leaky gut. That's not on the list, but of course, leaky gut plays a factor, right? Because when you have these toxins, what they're doing is they're taking your tight junctions, they're pulling those tight junctions apart, allowing undigested food, other toxins into the bloodstream, and that of course is going to weaken you more, create systemic inflammation. That systemic inflammation allows and feeds yeast. So all these things are depleting your ability to actually take care of them, which is why you need to come in, do some proper testing, and then you create a functional medicine protocol to overcome these. You use herbs to suppress the growth of bacteria. You use herbs to suppress the candida. You use binders to start pulling out mold toxin. You can use herbs to gain an upper hand on Epstein-Barr and viruses and parasites and Lyme and co-infections. And then once you start to detox first, usually, is kind of the order of operations, then you come after these secondary and tertiary infections like parasites, bacteria, candida. But if you've treated candida before and you failed, it's probably because you have mold. I've seen this hundreds of times and I will continue to see it. So I will continue to toot the horn, ring the bell, raise the alarm, whatever I have to do to make people aware of this huge epidemic, all because we have drywall in our houses and we have humid environments. When I went to Florida with my wife and kids, every single building we went in was moldy. You could see water spots on the ceiling. You could smell the must. So if you live in a human environment, you're more likely to have this problem. I've seen moldy houses in Arizona in the middle of the desert as well though, because they use swamp coolers and that high moisture allows mold to thrive in the indoor environment. See, our houses are so tight these days, that's why it's becoming a bigger problem. When we had leaky homes, bad windows and such, you'd have some airflow and that air exchange would help to dilute some of this stuff. Now everything's so tight, the toxins build up and up and up. 
not to mention you throw EMF, electromagnetic fields, Wi-Fi and cell towers or some research being done on finding that the virulence of mold increases, meaning they make more toxin when they're exposed to these wireless frequencies. Of course, many people are talking about 5G. There's a lot of unknowns about it, so uh, unnecessary fear is not, not worth your time. But I think it's important to be aware of these other factors here and make sure your environment is part of your, part of your situation. Uh, pets, homes, houses, things that have mold in the house. You could run these petri dish tests that we do in clinic and you can find candida floating around in your house. Therefore, you could be breathing in these candida spores from your bedroom, from your dog who's sleeping in your bed, and they're off-gassing candida. You breathe it in, it colonizes the sinuses, it goes down into your throat, goes down into your gut, and it colonizes the gut. And now you've got candida all over again. So this is why you have to consider the environment, the outside sources, plus the internal sources. It all counts. Now, if you'd like to work together, I'd be happy to help you. I work with people worldwide. You can just click on screen. You can schedule a 15-minute free call with my staff. We would love to hear what's going on. What have you tried? What's helped? What hasn't helped? Have you been to 20 people and you still haven't got better? I hate that that's the normal situation, but that's the reality because people are missing the boat on these other causes. So this is Evan Brain signing out. You take good care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.